Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. It seems that a place for getting quick cash is fast becoming a spot for quick crimes, too. In the past month, San Antonio police have responded to about half a dozen calls involving cash being stolen at the site of ATMs. Katrina Weber tells us, although there are some similarities in these cases, police are not yet calling this a crime spree. Monday morning business at this Bank of America ATM on West Commerce near General McMullen had to be redirected for Robert Campos. I'm surprised they was closed. Leftover tape from a Friday afternoon crime blocked his bank transaction at this ATM. Lately, though, there has been a lot of police activity at cash machines throughout the city. I always knock the door. I look everywhere. If I see a car with a guy inside, you know what? I'm gone. Campos takes steps to protect himself, but in many cases, criminals are targeting the machines themselves. We captured video after one break-in last week on West Avenue with the ATM left wide open and the money missing. We found a similar scene on Marbach Road the week before. Another on Walsham Road was hit earlier this month, and someone tried but failed to steal the entire ATM on Bandera Road. All of those involve Chase Bank's ATMs. And in every case, including the B of A where Campos does business, the crooks made a clean getaway. In this case, there was no need to force open this machine. Police say they used force on a man, someone who was in the process of servicing this ATM. A sign hints that a break-in would not have worked here. Police say instead, the masked robbers made the technician hand over the machine's cash. Most of the other cases, the break-ins, shared several similarities. All involved Chase Banks with the crook's tools, stolen trucks, chains, and hooks left behind. But police told us they cannot say for sure if the cases are connected. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. So usually at noon, it's 92 degrees. Tell me there's a heat wave in the air, Justin. We're seeing 94 not a good sign. Oh. Not a good sign. We're going to see those temperatures uh, get quite a bit warmer than what they were over the weekend. And it's kind of like, oh, man, what are you telling me here? But uh, it is going to be hot this week. We're going to see those temperatures approaching records in some cases. Let me show you the map here with the uh, heat uh, advisories and excessive heat warnings. We have quite a few across the state of Texas, and here's how I think things shape up today. 105 in Dallas, it'll feel like 107. 103 here in San Antonio, it'll feel like 104. 106 is what it will feel like in Houston. You get the general idea here. High pressure starting to build back in, and that's why these numbers are coming up. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but hey, let's look at some good news here, some positivity. I posted this earlier. We're only 54 days away from autumn beginning. Our average first front, approximately 60 days away. That's when we see our average first front anyway. It's not a guarantee. That's kind of the general idea. Uh, annual solar eclipse, this is a big one. Coming up in October, it's only 75 days away, and actually during an eclipse, temperatures cool down a little bit, so that's why we added it to the list. And our average first freeze is about 120 days away. So some stuff to look forward to. We'll get there. we got to get through this week, though, uh, which could include some more record highs. More on that and how July is going to end up in the record books coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. New this noon, San Antonio police looking for leads in two different cases, and now they're asking for your help. The first case on the west side, a man shot and killed. Seven years later, officers still don't know who pulled the trigger. So police say Isaac Jesus Orozco getting out of his car in front of an apartment complex when someone pulled up to him, that driver shot him in the stomach. Now, this happened July 28th, the 1500 block of Northwest Crossroads near Calabro Road and 410. So far, all police know about the suspect is that the person is a man driving a black SUV. And San Antonio police and crime stoppers searching for a man who they say assaulted someone after a car crash. Now, officers say this all happened on July 16th near I-35 North and North Walters. The car stopped on I-35 after the crash. That's when one driver assaulted the other with a knife. The suspect driving a white early 2000s GMC Yukon with a gray trim at the bottom. Now, that vehicle may have front end damage in the aftermath of the crash. If you know any information that can help investigators in either of the cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP.
And we have some new details on a shooting investigation on the northwest side. Police now saying the victim and the suspect were actually friends. Officers arrived on Cinnamon Creek Drive last night. That's where they found a 19 year old man shot. This was near Hamilton Wolf and Fredericksburg Road. The victim told police that his friend shot him, but he doesn't know why. Police searched for that person, but they have not found him yet. The victim taken to the hospital, but should be okay. And we are learning more about the moments leading up to a crash involving a police officer. Balcones Heights police say that an officer tried to pull the suspect over because he was speeding and didn't have his headlights on. This was on the Loop 410 access road near Fredericksburg Road. That's what officers say he sped away and ended up crashing into another police vehicle that was nearby. Everyone in the suspect's vehicle was taken into custody. The 19 year old facing DWI charges. That officer who was hit should be okay. And a 15 year old says someone was yelling at him before he was shot at a Northwest side apartment complex. Police say the teen was walking through the complex on Babcock Road near Fredericksburg. That's when a driver pulled up and someone inside that vehicle started yelling at the teen. Now the 15 year old started running away. That's when someone shot him in the thigh. He was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. So far, no word on any arrests. Former President Donald Trump's legal issues continue to grow and could grow even more now. A grand jury could hand up a third criminal indictment for the Republican frontrunner any day now. Meanwhile, those legal problems, they are racking up huge bills, already more than $40 million. ABC's Justin Finch explains who's paying for it. As the special counsel's federal probes into alleged criminal activity by former President Donald Trump and some of his allies intensifies, they have been getting help to ease the burden of their mounting legal costs. In Washington, a grand jury is set to reconvene this week and could render a decision soon to indict Trump for his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. And in Miami, Carlos de Oliveira, property manager at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, appeared in federal court today after being charged last week in special counsel Jack Smith's superseding indictment related to the improper handling of classified records. Prosecutors accused de Oliveira of attempting to delete surveillance video after a grand jury subpoenaed the footage, then lying to the FBI about it. De Oliveira was released on $100,000 bond and is now set for arraignment next month since he had no counsel in court today. That indictment also including three additional criminal counts against Trump. On the campaign trail, Trump slamming the new charges and continuing to deny any wrongdoing. These are ridiculous indictments. They want to damage the leading candidate. Sources tell ABC News a campaign filing due out today will show his political action committee has already paid more than $40 million in Trump's legal bills for the first half of this year. ABC News also learning Trump's team is launching a legal defense fund to help as some of his Republican presidential rivals take aim. I don't think that was a good, good use of the money. And in Georgia, the Fulton County District Attorney investigating Trump's alleged efforts to interfere with that state's 2020 election results says her grand jury's work is accomplished. An indictment decision could come as early as next month. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. All right, how about them Cowboys? So we saw Jerry Jones raise a trophy last week at the start of camp. But the big question is, will he be raising one at the end of the season? We are camping with KSAT. People of color getting support to grow their businesses. How a week-long effort here in San Antonio is there to help. Welcome back. Happy Monday. How to trademark a product. How to expand your reach. How to get clients through the doors. So many questions when you own your own business. And all that and so much more on tap. The third annual Black Business Week San Antonio. Tiffany, we're just with a repeat customer who says she found the tools to grow last year, and in fact, they helped her double her business. There were lots of classes to teach you how to grow your business. It's Lakeisha Hairston's second year attending Black Business Week San Antonio. The experience last year gave me a lot of resources, a lot of resources. Hairston owns a career and healthcare training company and says thanks to these resources, she has been able to expand her business. My classes have grown. Um, I started out with two classes and now I have five, you know, all because of Black Business San Antonio. 
Black Business Week aims to showcase several businesses and uplift owners. The event, hosted by Black Business San Antonio, takes place at the Holiday Inn SeaWorld. We're going to give you workshops, discussions, conversations, solutions to everyday problems in business and in life. Black Business San Antonio has over 130 members, and Black Business Week is growing. There's more events and workshops this year. So we have more classes. Last year we only had about 10 or 12 classes. This year we have 20. Retired Air Force veteran Lakeisha Howard is inspired by stories like Hairston's and looks forward to growing her business. She has a message for other entrepreneurs. Get involved, come out. There's still time for this week. Network with other business owners. You, the way has already been paved. So it's just a matter of connecting and growing. Even if it's a seed, that you thought about starting a business, this is the way to go right here at Black Business San Antonio. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with live cam, 94 degrees. Oh, it hurts already because you know what's coming. And it's going to be a week's worth of this, Justin? Yeah, I, I, every day at noon this week, we're probably going to be right there, 94, 95, unfortunately. Uh, the, the aquifer it's actually down 0.8 today. I'll change that. It's down to 628.6. It's down from uh, the weekend where it jumped up a little bit just because water usage was a little bit lower. And your pollen count, molds are low at 220. What kind of records are we going to set this July as we wind down in July, head into August? We'll take a look. Coming up. Welcome back. Happy Monday. We're out here trying to normalize being excited for the week. Although when you look at the weather, <laughs> it is quite difficult to do that. We are not good actors. No. Uh, there is no normal. Did you see what just happened? It just jumped up to 95. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> just thought I'd point you. that out. You're uh, making just it within worse. the last 30 seconds. Uh, here we are. Yeah, the temperatures are climbing very quickly. And the reason behind it, you already know this, our ridge of high pressure, which is now starting to build back over Texas. And that's why temperatures are starting to jump up some uh, it is moving a little bit closer to us. Everything's moving around our ridge of high pressure as far as rain goes. So it's around the edges where you'll see some rain, but that does not include us. Uh, there is a little piece of energy that wants to kind of round the ridge and wants to maybe come into South Texas tomorrow. But all indications are this high pressure is just a little too strong. It's kind of squashes everything. So we're going to keep rain out of the picture, unfortunately. Uh, and this is the forecast for today. It does show a few showers across far east Texas and Louisiana, but nothing here in Texas. And we have all those heat advisories and excessive heat warnings stretching from Abilene to Dallas down to Austin and over to Jackson and New Orleans. We're under a heat advisory, but regardless, hot is hot. And it's still going to be extremely hot today. 104 is the max heat index value we're thinking later today. 107 in Dallas, 104 Little Rock, 112 is what it will feel like in Shreveport. So that's why those heat advisories and excessive heat warnings are in effect today. That heat's just kind of sliding east a little bit. Okay, well, let's talk records for July 2023. Here's how I think we end up. 89.3, that's with uh, today's temperatures uh, forecast view where they are that probably holds right about this number. So that would put a second all time ho hottest July on record just behind last year. And never have we seen two years in a row with record setting July. So this was kind of a first there. If you're just looking at the high temperature, we'll finish somewhere around 100.6. Uh, and I think we'll finish in second place just behind 2022. What a brutal stretch we've been through over the last couple of years. And I wish I could tell you something's going to change here soon. No, not in the short term, but long term, we're hoping. We're hoping with us moving into more of an El Nino type pattern that will hopefully take hold uh, late in the fall and winter. 93 right now. Dew point is at 68. Heat index is at 97. Keep in mind that temperature you see there at the uh, bottom of your screen, what you saw earlier, is kind of keeping it. Uh, the temperature minute by minute. This is at the top of the hour. We were at 93. So as you look at the satellite picture here, we've got clouds 
along the coast. Some uh, high clouds trying to work through some of our southern counties, and we'll see a few clouds pop up here and there today, but nothing that's going to produce any rainfall. 95 at the airport, 92 Uvalde, 99 Creosote Springs, uh, 94 Holotus, 97 in Comfort, and the feels like number, the heat index, 103 in Holotus, now 101 Stenson, 102 New Braunfels. So we're already seeing the heat index jump into the triple digits, and the dew point trend is for dew points to come down to about 60 or so. And if we get there, that won't produce much of a heat index, but that takes until late afternoon to dinner time for that to happen. So we're forecasting 103. That feels like number about 104 at our peak. It's around 5 p.m. today. So that's what you can expect. Uh, it is a CPS Energy yellow day. We've got to conserve energy. The Texas power grid is going to be taxed today because it's not just us. As we look at the future cast, high pressure dances around, but it comes right back over top of us as we get into Thursday and Friday, and so that means more heat. Extended forecast, 103 Tuesday, 103 Wednesday. Uh, you get the idea, 104 Friday. These are near records too, guys, so it's, uh, it's gonna be a tough week, but we'll get through it together. Ah, painful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. More road work is expected here in the Alamo City into the early days of August. So let's get you started and make sure that you start noting what you can expect out here in Kendall County because we have maintenance work, maintenance work that begins Monday, July 31st. This takes us to tomorrow, Tuesday, August 1st. Now this work starts around 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. It's during that time, drivers will see various main lane closures in both directions at Scenic Loop Road. Now let's talk about what's happening here along 281 on the north side of San Antonio. There's always something going on on there. Paving work. This also begins Monday, July 31st, but this takes us to the weekend, Saturday, August 5th. The work starts at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. It's during that time. Drivers will see alternating lane closures on the frontage road in both directions at Boulevardy Road. All right, you know which one I'm going to be talking about here. It's 1604 North Expansion Project. Yep, where we'll see barrier work take place. According to Textile, this begins Friday, August 4th, and again, it wraps on Monday, August 7th. This work is also overnight. 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. This time we'll see the westbound main lane full closures from the Kyle Seal Parkway exit ramp to Bandera Road entrance ramp. And again, that is a full weekend closure, which means those barriers will be out there for the duration of this project. There is a whole lot happening for the month of August, so scan this QR code. Note before you go, that takes you to our traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures in our area. So know what to expect. Plan your commute ahead of time. Thank you, Stephen. All right, on top of traffic, there is football in the air, and both our pro Texas teams, they are out camping. As you can see right here, Jerry Jones sitting out with Larry Ramirez, getting the inside scoop. And let's head a little down south. How about the Texans? New head coach, new quarterback, a new look team. We're going to break it all down. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. How about them Cowboys? Continuing training camp this week, and you got to imagine, California weather makes practice outdoors much more tolerable than here in Texas. And there's one of the reasons owner Jerry Jones says the team continues to head to California for training camp in the summer. He said California weather gives the team and the players more time to prepare for the new season. And what a weekend we had. Larry Ramirez sitting down with Jerry Jones talking about the team. And when asked what Jerry likes most about this time of year as he gets ready for the regular season, this is what he had to say. When somebody tells you or shows you what they are, don't question it. That's what they are. That's what they are. And so out here, mm -hmm. when these players with these conditions show themselves in the mirror or show us what they are, mm -hmm. that's what they are. And so it gives us a great chance to evaluate our players. That was actually a great quote. So you can hear more from Jerry Jones. Just head to KSAT.com. Sit down, watch the whole interview. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Here's the Cowboys schedule for the rest of the week. They're practicing at 1 p.m. today and tomorrow. And they're going to be putting on pads. Wednesday, they're going out at 1.45 p.m. 1.45 here in San Antonio. That is way too hot to function. Thursday, back to 1 p.m. Friday, a noon walkthrough. Saturday afternoon practice, they're going to practice at 1 p.m. And then Sunday, they get the beautiful day off. All right, heading down south, Houston Texans. They were off over the weekend, back in practice field at the Methodist Training Center outside of NRG Stadium. And yesterday, the first day, we got to hear from the Texans' top pick, quarterback C.J. Stroud out of Ohio State, presumptively the new starting quarterback, but yet to be determined. So they picked him number two overall after finishing with a 3-13 record last season. 
Not a mathematician, but not a record you want to finish with. He was asked about adjusting to a new offensive scheme, new playbook, and obviously a new offensive coordinator. Yeah, I mean, I, I fell in love with it. Uh, it's a different style of what I played in college, but a lot of similarities to it as well. Um, very timing based, and uh, I've actually really uh, dove deep into it with with Drod and and um, Bill and, and Shane, and then Case and Davis have done a great job helping me as well. So uh, there's a lot of late nights uh, studying, a lot of early morning studying, just really trying to get this thing and know it like the back of my hand. All right, so based on what we've heard in camp, it seems like a lot of the Texas players, they're taking the new QB under their wing, including members of the defense. We got safeties, we got cornerbacks, and hey, we got everyone loving this new quarterback. And preach you, we ride to practice together early in the morning, probably two of the first people in the building, and uh, we just talk a mess from the, from the, from the start to the end. So uh, he does a good job of, of, of telling me what he sees in me, and I tell him what I see. Uh, they do a good job. They fly around back there, him and uh, him and Juan. So um, I definitely, definitely uh, appreciate them for just being honest and, and communicating with me uh, on things they can see I can do better at, and then, uh, of course, competing like that. Uh, Steve Nelson has, has been a big brother to me. He took me under his wing and showed me some things, and then, of course, uh, D. Steen has definitely been, been, uh, been improving every day and looks really good out there. I mean, look, when you're playing quarterback, it is always so important to talk to the safeties and cornerbacks because they're getting the opposite perspective. So, speaking of perspectives, let's look at the cow the coaches and what they're going to be doing for the rest of the week. So, 9 a.m. practices, a couple next days. Wednesday they get off, a little midday week. And uh, look, Thursday, 9 a.m., Friday, 9 a.m. See, you notice, Ursula, they're here in Texas, so you got to practice earlier than the Cowboys over in California. That way we can cover everybody. It's true. I don't think it's for us. I think it's for, uh, you know, their yeah. health because it's too hot. I don't know. Nine o'clock in Texas right now is not pretty. No. All right. NFL training camps continue as we get closer to preseason. That begins Thursday, but only for the Jets and Browns. Everyone else has their preseason game next week. Texans Patriots next Thursday, August 10th. Jags Cowboys, August 12th. Regular season doesn't begin until September, but I got to tell you, I don't know what it is. I'm just so ready for football. You know why? Why? I know why. Why is that? Because football weather mm. is about 20 degrees cooler than this. That's a great point. I didn't think about that. You yeah. didn't even mention I was wearing a purple LSU tie. And no LSU stories. I uh, know. Mm. Well, no news is good news sometimes. Okay, in the next half hour. Ooh. A pilot relatively unscathed after this plane crash. The whole scene playing out in front of a crowded beach. How onlookers rushed in to help. Yeah, let's check in with some friends at SA Live. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what's going on over there, but I want one. Yeah, um, it looks like there's something sweet happening. Something... Couple things sweet. Yeah, oh, Barbie cookies. Oh. We know Mike loves Barbie. Don't hurt Barbie, okay. And a grande loco. Now to some relief from all this relenting heat, if there is any relief. The Northeast and the Midwest seeing more milder temperatures. ABC's Ginger Z reporting that the heat did not go away, though, with a whimper uh, coming to an end with a severe and deadly storm. A bit of relief for millions of Americans as severe storms help bring an end to the first official heat wave of the season for parts of the Northeast. A powerful line of storms swept through Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Maryland Saturday, gusts up to 84 miles per hour, knocking out power to more than 200,000 customers. Streets littered with fallen trees. It was a lot of wind and a lot of rain just pounding for, I don't know, like at least a half hour straight, I would say. A tree in the nation's capital shattering the windshield and crushing the roof of this car. And this soldier standing guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier through the storm at the Arlington National Cemetery, never leaving his post. Police in that state investigating a possible storm-related death of a 43-year-old man, reportedly killed after a tree fell onto his home. Another tree falling onto a house in Easton, Massachusetts, the work of an EF-1 tornado. My wife was actually on the porch filming the rain and she turned her camera off within 15 seconds that tree came down. And the extreme heat still scorching the south. More than 70 million Americans under heat alerts. Ambulances rushing to back to school events in Georgia, bringing 10 people suffering heat related injuries to the ER. Fire personnel treating 10 more on the scene. People started actually passing out and what have you. 
Taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, sir. We are moving on up in that temperature scale. We're already at 96. This is, uh, I think we might break a record today, could we? We're forecasting to at least tie a record, but if we got up to 104, it would be a record. And at this point, I think we could be at 100 by 2 p.m. this afternoon. Wow. Uh, so we do have to give you that whole speech. Be careful, drink lots of water. You know the drill, but we do need to put that out there. And let me show you across the country what's going on. Dallas jumps off the map, right? It's at 100. The hottest temperatures right here in Texas now is that high slides back over top of us. And uh, that means temperatures are really going to crank up. And that's where a lot of the uh, heat advisories are today. Hotter than places like Phoenix and Las Vegas, which had been the hot spots. Now they're kind of transferring that heat back to us. 101 at Wichita Falls, 92 in Lubbock, 92 in Midland, 93 here in San Antonio. So not as hot as our friends up north, but we're getting there. You saw that uh, probably by next hour we're at 97 or 98. Here's the weather where you live around the area. We want to check in on New Braunfels where it is currently 95, but feels like 102. Seguin's at 94, feels like 100 there. Bernie, not much of a heat index, but uh, you're sitting at 91. Kerrville's at 94, feels like 96. So it's hot no matter where you go. Uh, yes, I think we're at 100 by 2 o'clock. 103 at 4 o'clock. And it's between that 4 and 5 o'clock hour where we could potentially set a record today if we do get to 104. 102 at 6 o'clock, and we're still at 100 well into the evening. Takes until really uh, midnight to even drop into the 80s with mostly clear skies. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now, authorities trying to find a New Hampshire woman and her young daughter. Right now, it is feared that they have been kidnapped in Haiti. ABC's Rena Roy reports now the U.S. State Department, they're finally getting involved. The search intensifying in Haiti for this American mother and her child who haven't been seen since Thursday. The woman, identified as Alex Dorsonville, was working for a Christian humanitarian aid organization called El Roy Haiti, according to officials with the nonprofit, when they say she was abducted. The morning of the reported kidnapping, they say she was serving in a community ministry near the capital of Port-au-Prince. In this promotional video, Dorsonville seen discussing her work. Kids from the school will get permission from their teachers and they send them over and come to the nurse's office and then I check them out. The U.S. State Department confirming agency officials are aware of the kidnapping reports, telling ABC News we are in regular contact with Haitian authorities and will continue to work with them and our U.S. government interagency partners. The State Department now ordering families of U.S. government employees to evacuate and continuing to urge Americans not to travel there due to widespread kidnapping and crime. Local officials estimate 80% of Port-au-Prince is controlled by rival gangs. ABC's Matt Rivers recently reporting from there. This area is completely controlled by armed groups. It is one of the most dangerous places in all of Haiti. In fact, the only reason we're allowed into this area is because we've been granted permission. Gangs have been an issue in Haiti for a long time, but after the assassination of Jovenel Moise, the president in 2021, their power and violence associated with them has exploded. According to the UN, at least 846 civilians were killed across the country in the first three months of this year. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Russian missiles slamming into a central Ukrainian city, killing at least five people, including a 10-year-old child and her mother. That's according to Ukraine's interior minister. Those blasts trapping residents beneath rubble. The minister says that the two missiles struck an apartment building. It destroyed a university building. This area is known as the hometown of the Ukrainian president and typically has not been the main target of the Kremlin's forces during, so far, the 17-month war. Hundreds of mourners attending funerals in Pakistan after a suicide bombing killed at least 54 people at an election rally. No one immediately claimed responsibility for yesterday's bombing in Bajor. At least uh, five children were wounded, or killed rather, and wounded nearly 200 people wounded. The attack appeared to reflect divisions between Islamic groups, which have a strong presence near the Afghanistan border. According to police, at least 1,000 people were crowded in a tent near a market for the rally ahead of the fall elections. Now to that dramatic rescue, all caught on camera, lifeguards and beachgoers rushing to save a drowning pilot in the surf 
near a crowded beach. ABC's Will Reeve with what witnesses are now saying about this crash. This is the moment a small plane crashes into the ocean just off a crowded New Hampshire beach. Watch the fixed wing plane nosedive, then flip, coming to an upside down rest just off the shore of Hampton Beach. It's in the water! Oh my God! Holy cow! Onlookers stunned and rushing to help. Everybody was in shock. Everybody started running towards the plane. Cheryl Barsom and her daughter Jessica saw the whole thing and called 911. So you can definitely see there was a problem. And then as soon as he hit the water, his nose just hit the water and he just flipped over. So we all started calling 911 or help. All companies are going to be tied up with a call before of an aircraft in the water out from the main beach. The pilot was the only soul on board and survived. Lifeguards racing into the water to rescue him. We were all worried about the pilot and how everything would happen. Um, so it was definitely very nerve wracking. Moments later, the pilot was safely brought to shore. The focus then turning to quickly getting the plane out before it sank to the bottom. When we were pulling the plane in, we had to go underwater and hook it to the tire, the back, the rear tire, so we could pull it out. So making sure everyone is safe. Rescuers saying the pilot only had minor injuries and that overall they're grateful. Thorough training prepared them for moments like this. So luckily the pilot actually didn't need to be transported. We're just extremely happy that there is a great outcome, that everyone was safe. And again, everyone worked together. As we'll be reporting. Idaho mother Lori Vallow Daybell facing up to life in prison without parole. She's expected to be sentenced later today in the murders of her two youngest children and a romantic rival. So the case has included bizarre claims that her son and daughter were zombies and that she was a goddess sent to usher in biblical apocalypse. Vallow Daybell found guilty in May of killing her two youngest children, ages 7 and 16 years old, as well as, well as conspiring to kill Tammy Daybell. Now, she was previously married to Vallow Daybell's fifth husband. The judge expected to hear testimony from several representatives of the victims, including Vallow Daybell's only surviving son. Student loan repayments are creeping up and ahead. They'll change. There's a uh, new effort to help people manage their debt. And alcohol could have an effect on blood pressure, and that effect might come sooner than you think.